Governor Williams, the Postmaster General, Governor Askew of Florida, Julie and David, I have never in my life been alone with the President of the United States. I've never one minute been alone with him. I have never had any talk directly or indirectly with him. And, uh, How about and with any of his top advisors? That's not, uh, none of that's true. Okay. That's just absolutely right. untrue. I'm a totally untrue statement, and anybody that writes it and says it, they're just not telling the truth. I'm glad to it's have... so many things said about George Wallace that aren't true. And when the people of Michigan and Ohio and California listened to me as they did in Wisconsin, I, in eight days, I, I ran well, Governor, a second. If I may, I'm glad to have you set the record straight on that, but let's go back to the first point. You know and I know that there no, is no sir. way that you can win the Democratic no, nomination. I don't, uh, I, I don't think you know and I don't think that I know who's going to be the nominee. Well, I know it isn't going to be George Wallace well, in the Democratic uh, Party well, because the mechanics of the thing won't your, permit don't it. Don't bet your life on it. But uh, what if you're not uh, the nominee? Would you support the nominee of the party? I believe that the nominee of the party uh, at that time, whoever it happens to be, if it's not me, and I feel that I do have an opportunity and a chance to be the nominee, and my judgment will run on a platform that's almost identical to what I'm saying Will now you support the nominee of the party? Will you support Muskie? If, if I go to the convention and they adopt the platform and the candidate adopts the platform and, and embraces it himself, uh, based on what they're now saying, I could certainly support the nominee of the Democratic Party. Well, you party. know they're not going to adopt the platform I, that you want them to why, adopt. Well, <clears throat> why do I know that that's not true when Mr. Muskie and Mr. Humphrey and Mr. McGovern are saying identically what I've been saying on nearly every issue. All of them are for law enforcement now. All of them are for kicking welfare loafers off the welfare road. All of them are for cutting taxes. I raised that issue in Florida. But and then they raised it again, and now uh, uh, they're talking about tax relief. I started that in 1968. Well, Governor, how do you explain the fact that the latest Harris poll shows that more people in this country consider you an extremist and well, a racist now they, than they did four years ago? Well, I don't believe that that's uh, a correct poll. The Harris poll, I think, showed I'd run fourth or fifth in the state of Wisconsin. I ran second. The Harris poll showed I'd get 28 percent of the vote in Florida. I got 42 percent. And that's just not necessary. Well, let me get true. specific. If Muskie is the candidate of the party, will you support Muskie? If the Democratic Party adopts a platform that well, I Well, you said that, but let me ask, answer my question about Muskie. Well, I'm not going to say whether I'll support them or not, because they have said you they would support me. They have said they would not support That's right. Me. They All said, right. but they're honest enough. Why don't you be equally well, as I'm, honest and I'm say honest. you won't support them? No, I'm honest about it because I don't know whether I will or not. I may support them if they embrace a platform that I feel they will adopt. In view of the fact that they're all talking like I'm talking now, then I could very well support the nominee of the party. Could you support Humphrey? If they embrace the platform that I'm talking about? Well, why does it about? have to be an if? There's the I man. The platform to, I, is relatively insignificant. I don't have to say yes or no because they won't say yes or no. Well, they now, say no. They say they'll not right, support well, you. Well, let me say this, and I'll be a little bit uh, kinder to them than they are to me. They say no. I'll say I'm undecided. So you're undecided on McGovern, too? You're undecided on Ted Kennedy? If they're undecided on me, I'm undecided Well, they're on not them. undecided. They say well, they won't support Well, I'll you. say I'm undecided okay. on them. We'll be right back. Governor Wallace, I have in front of me a newspaper ad that appeared in the Miami News of March 1st, which raised some questions about your record in Alabama. Now, listen, just Mr. Gordon. I've been on your program here, and you trying to use it as just a propaganda argument against me. Let me talk some. All of this stuff that uh, ads and political opponents have put things out are not true. All of this stuff you're reading here is none of it true. I wouldn't have been elected governor of Alabama had it been true. And so if you want to talk uh, uh, to a governor of a state in a proper fashion without trying to read the propaganda of ACLU lawyers that you did a moment ago, the American Civil Liberty Who's Union, propaganda uh, George Dean. I read from a reporter from the Tuscaloosa well, News. that's all right. That's a propaganda argument. Governor, you're argument. supposed to be able to take care of well, yourself. Did, People are criticizing you. You told me why did you, before you began this program, I said they referred to my read, wife and I as Beauty and the Beast. Why did you, you said read, that would be nice if they talked about you why that did, way. Why didn't you read an editorial in the Alabama Independent? Why didn't you read an editorial well, in the I'm confronting in the you Dolphin and giving Eagle? you an opportunity to respond. Why didn't you read an editorial in the, uh, in the Troy Messenger? Well, did you uh, have you, them? I'd be glad to no, read them. I, I wasn't here But to I read don't have editorial. that kind of program, Governor. I have people come here, and I must give you credit for being here. Hubert Humphrey was not willing to appear on this program because I'm a tough interviewer, and well, I ask people tough questions. Well, you're not a tough interviewer. Well, you just read propaganda by enemies of mine, which is all biased. Well, let's go to, let's go to the record, then. Let's look at some facts. For example... In an interview on CBS's television, Face the Nation, you said, and I'm quoting you, at least the people, you can walk the streets of Alabama safely. 
Now, the FBI figures say that the murder rate in, in Montgomery, the state capital where you live, is up 56 percent. Birmingham, Alabama, up 60 percent. Mr. Gordon? Mobile, 50 percent. Mr. The, Gordon, uh, the total crime index in Alabama is 1865. Well, let's talk about the murder rate. Uh, all right. Let's, let's look at Michigan now. Well, let's Are talk you, about you, the murder no, rate. I want to talk about me. I will talk about that. The crime rate, the crime rate in this state is 3659 where you live with all your influence. It's terrible and I, I talk the, about the, it all the, the time, the governor. Crime, the violent crime rate in Michigan is 562 and Alabama is 295. Governor, I talk about all it all right. the time. Well, no, you, but I'm well, asking you about the murder rate in the city in which you live. Well, now, well, may, may I answer that question? It, it's up the, I, I hate to, to mention this because you call me a racist. Uh, I but call we, you a racist? Well, I mean, you would call me a racist for probably saying it, but we do have a high crime rate among our black citizens among each other, and I hope someday we can solve that. I don't know why it happens. I, I have no answer to it. I do know that the federal courts in this country turn people loose at the drop of a hat, and you cannot, cannot enforce the law. But we do have a violent crime rate all over the country. But those are crimes of passion where you cannot guard against. Crimes of passion where people decide to kill one another.